Welcome to the official Colts podcast. I'm Jeffrey Gorman, Latte Lara <laughs> Overton. <laughs> Lara can't find the rundown. JJ Stankovitz is here. You will get that rundown, Lara. Hey, guys, what is the vibe check around here? Here's my thing. I'm going to start it off. 21-16 victory. Things are uh, The cake always tastes sweeter after a victory when I'm talking about the Monday through Friday at the football complex getting ready for every Sunday. Lara, with you first. Always feels good to win around here, and the Colts did it in a fun fashion and as, as well. Oh, it was entertaining. I, I joked with Rick and Matt on the radio broadcast that I was talking entirely too much because there was so much going on. Um, it was a game in which, you know, you're happy to get the, the victory, but just felt like there wasn't a whole lot of flow, mm -hmm. you know, on, on either side. So, uh, but for the Colts to gut out a win in that fashion, for the defense to stop the run the way they did, get those critical takeaways, see JT, Trey Sermon, and how about, I mean, I don't know if I can watch enough the highlight of the full team push mm. to get Trey Sermon into the end zone, and that's one thing I talked about, talked with Shane Steichen about this week on Colts 3. 60 was just the willingness of your quarterback to do whatever it takes. He is a teammate above everything else. That's how he sees himself and just the willingness to do whatever it takes, whatever his role is in a particular uh, play, particular position. And you saw that exactly highlighted there, but yeah, felt it, that <laughs> this is I, now I'm getting I'm getting paid back for making fun of Casey Valier from a kerfuffle uh, uh, from work. earlier in the week. Thank you. Uh, but the environment was awesome. Uh, really, really fun. You could feel in that fourth quarter. Some of that blue and orange sound was. I like squashed, I like shutting know. the Bears fans up. I'm, yeah. I, I yeah. can't believe I'm saying that at home this week because that black oh, and gold travels well. Double so. J, this is a team that you covered. Do you yeah. know about Chicago? This is a little sweet victory for you. Yeah. Seeing the Bears come in, you had a great game on the big mic uh, uh, at Lucas Oil hey, Stadium. So hey, I'm talking about the vibe here around Vibe Check, and we're going to get into more. We're going to get into more today, but the vibe checked after getting that one because we thought, oh, boy, we're looking forward. What if they don't win this game? What does that mean for the season? Oh, they must win. Yeah. I don't want to say much, but now, hey, everything's calm, cool, and collected. The AFC South is way up in the air right now. So uh, the vibe check, how are you Look, feeling? You, you don't want to be where the Jaguars are mm -hmm. right now. You don't want to be where the Oof. Titans are. You don't want to be where the Bengals are. Those are the three 0-3 teams in the NFL right now. Mm. The, you said that you know the which cake. one of those is I'm sorry but yeah. which one of those is most surprising to you the Bengals, the Bengals. in mine yes, yeah the I Bengals because right? the Bengals That's opened the with New England a team that everyone kind of thought they would win that game and then they got Washington at home and right. they can't win either of those games Jacksonville's got you know, they, they've had a tough schedule to open the season but you know that that's a team that struggled down the stretch Trevor mm -hmm. Lawrence hasn't won a game since Thanksgiving uh, that that I'm not shocked I'm surprised I'm not shocked and then Tennessee I mean. They, they made some additions mm. in the offseason. I thought they would be a lot better, yeah. but Will Levis keeps throwing the ball to the other team for touchdowns. That's a tough thing to overcome. Absolutely. Well, we want to welcome. There, no, 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 no. That was yeah. good. That was good. That was good. Um, for the Colts, though, I think just like it, taking those three teams into account of like, man, like you're now you re, if you're going to make it out of this season, you got to scratch and claw. Remember the 2021 Colts that started off 0-3? Mm -hmm. They, they expended so much energy mm -hmm. getting back to – just getting back to 500 mm -hmm. that year. And then they went on a bit of a run, and it cratered at the end of the year, obviously, with the, the Raiders and the Jaguars' losses. You don't want to be in that position where you just have to use so much momentum to make up ground during the season. And I talked with Kenny Moore the second after the Packers game, and he said, look, like the first quarter of the season, obviously you want to win all your games. But if you come out of that 2-2, two and two, you're even – then you can start building. Colts have that opportunity right now. And Absolutely. you just feel like everything is so much lighter. There was just yeah. this collective exhale just when you kind of get that monkey off your back. I said that during the broadcast on Sunday during our radio coverage. It just felt like with Jalen Jones, when he got that first interception, the entire defense like relaxed their shoulders, exhaled. It's like everyone played so much f faster, so much freer after that point. And then that was a ripple effect, like across everyone else, everything else, where you felt that at the end of the game as well, where it was like, okay, we held on, gutted it out. This We knew this was going to be a physical battle with those fronts that you have, really, you know, a battle of the trenches. And to come out victorious in the fashion that you did is a really good test, especially going into exactly what, you know, Pittsburgh is going to give you right yeah and look i don't care how it looks yeah early in the season like this pittsburgh game they all, one win counts the same right Th this pittsburgh game could be equally as ugly because that's a really good defense mm -hmm. and it, it could just turn into a rock fight 
But if the Colts win that game, it could be 9-6. to six. Who cares? Because now you can start building on it. The one thing you don't want to do early in the season is get beat bad, like the Jaguars did last mm-hmm. night. You don't want that because that is a – that's like – that's not a canary in the coal mine. That's like the coal mine's crashing down mm-hmm. when you lose by multiple touchdowns early in the season. If you're playing well and you're winning, like the Buffalo Bills, that's great. You can definitely build on that. If you're playing well and you're losing, mm. you may be losing some close games here and there. You can still build on that if you come out even. And then if you're winning ugly, you can also build on that because you're going to have the platform to do it later in the year. And I always feel like that, especially in that first third of the season or whatever it might be, Finding ways to win in different ways Mm -hmm. is so important, especially for a team that has as many young pieces as you do. Like, you're going to have games where, hey, defense maybe carries you. Well, then, you know, that tide will turn, and it's going to be, you know, the offense's time to shine, and they're going to be the ones carrying. Hey, there's a game maybe where it's special teams, um, and this very well maybe could be one of those type of situations. Um, (coughs) Who knows? But I do think that just like you said, J.J., like, you have to find ways to win in different ways. It's just don't get beat badly and um, just be able to not always count on the exact same formula to work week in and week out. Let's find those winning formulas. want to welcome everybody in listening to the Colts Audio Network as well as our YouTube viewers. Again, Lara Overton, J.J. Stankovitz. Guys, the winning formula that Lara talked about, let's be honest, and the kids said it right after the game, I have to play better. And I'm talking about Anthony Richardson with these percentages. He's got under 50% completion percentage. A winning formula, and I'm not saying do this in spite of Anthony Richardson. Yeah. It's just the level of growth that he's at that's going to get better and better and better. Let's talk about it. I mean, real-time big grown-up football games, you know, he doesn't have that many under his belt belt between college and pro, and this is going to be something that we're going to be seeing, knock on wood, gets better and better each week. A winning formula throughout this period, though, with the quarterback, I want to hear about it, and I want to start with the offensive line and and Jonathan Taylor. That's a couple of games back-to-back over 100 yards for JT. Yeah, that, that's where it starts for me. While your quarterback is figuring out how he can be the reason that you win games, right? Like, And the Colts believe Anthony Richardson will get there. He's, he's got work to do. He's got to get the completion percentage up. He's got to hit some of those throws where the guys are open and he's missing them. But if he gets there and the Colts have built this base of success on Jonathan Taylor and an offensive line that is kicking absolute butt up front, that's a, a really good foundation for this season and they can win games doing this so I looked up some numbers on the Colts offensive line they are their their top six in the NFL or sorry their fifth in pro football focus run block grade which is kind of like that's what we see right Mm -hmm. it's like guys not just blocking but finishing blocks if you look at if you look at Jonathan Taylor's 29 yard touchdown Mm -hmm. run like on the the uh, front side of that play or the, the what turned into the front side of the play Quentin Nelson's just like taking out a guy on Chicago who's totally overmatched. And then, but on the backside of it, Will Fries wow. is pancaking mm-hmm. the, the D tackle who he was over. Like just into the ground, pancaking, finishing him. Brandon Thorne does a great job uh, doing offensive line breakdowns on, uh, he's got a sub stack, he's got a Twitter account. He posted a clip of Will Fries finishing a play on Montez Sweat. He's a really good player. And he, Fries is just, Keeping him down, keeping him down, shoving, shoving. And finally, Sweat takes a swipe at him, like punches him, because he's so sick of how mm-hmm. Will Fries is finishing plays. Saw that. Saw that same play, and I'm thinking, old yeah. sweet Will Fries is just a nice, great interview, uh, great guy, can talk about whatever with him. And he's going after Montez Sweat like that. And you talked about Quentin Nelson. So I'm going to think, yeah. guys, this is bar fight stuff that's going it on is. there. Our but guys, it's, it's and our guys just, are winning the fight. It's not just the, the strength that this line has. Lara, like the technique they're playing with, is allowing Jonathan Taylor to be as patient as he is. Like, how many times have we seen JT? He gets up to, you know, behind Quentin Nelson, and it's just he's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. There's the whole bam, he goes through it. Yep. And you see, I was I was joking with Shane Steichen about this this week. It's like that little hitch that JT gets in his stride, right, where he has like either he has to like pause or a quick change of direction, right, to like shift over to find you know that narrow window as it's opening up. So it's been so much fun to watch like this entire offensive line, the continuity that they have had, the guidance, the leadership of Tony Sperano Jr. and Chris Watt, and what those guys do with the group that they have. I mean, if that group can continue to stay healthy, my gosh, like the opportunities that will be there, not just to continue with JT and Trey, but then also 
in using Anthony Richardson in some design run situations and seeing more and more of that as the season goes on. One thing, too, is do you think about the factor of, you know, we really just started to see these tight ends get more involved the last two weeks. It was Mo Alley Cox, and then it, this week it was Kylan Granson. Like, he's just being able to utilize those guys in the way that they envision it. Getting Josh Downs back will be significant. So there are some things that are, you know, you've waited on some health things to come around, some plays to open up, and I think that the involvement of those factors will be significant in finding more consistency in the passing game. I want to talk about the tight ends because these guys are criminally underrated currently. That group of tight ends, Moale Cox, Kylan Granson, Drew Ogletree, not because of what they're doing in the passing game. These guys have the second highest pro football focus run block grade of any tight end room in the NFL right now. They are just as important to the success of Jonathan Taylor right now, like the him not getting hit behind a line, the line of scrimmage all the time. They are doing a great job up front, those guys. And it, it's led by Moale Cox, who's a really good run blocking tight end. You're seeing good stuff from Drew Ogletree. He had a block on JT's 29-yard touchdown that helped spring it. You're seeing good stuff from Kylan Granson. JJ going to put you on the spot. Game. Yeah. What was the what was the snap count on those guys? What did they uh, were they even out those three tight ends over the course well, of offensive plays? Like me, I said, I'm let me pull you, it up while you put me on, on the spot the here. Spot. I got you. I got you on that. All right. So it was pretty even. Moelle Cox had 30. Kylan Granson had 26, and Drew Ogletree had 20. Nice. Okay. So pretty even right there. The 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 thing with the Colts' run game is last year it was efficient, but it was not explosive, right? Like Zach Moss, was, he was getting what was there primarily. And the Colts in 2023, they were sixth in yards before contact per attempt. So like 1.5 yards beyond the line of scrimmage, Zach Moss was pretty much getting that, Jonathan Taylor as well, when he was in there. But they were 22nd in yards after contact per attempt. So that tells you, again, they were, they were efficient. They weren't explosive this year. The Colts are second in yards before contact per attempt. So same thing, really high. They're getting great push up front. And now they're 10th in yards after contact per attempt. Okay. Jonathan Taylor has 16 explosive runs. That is second most in the NFL, I believe. Like he's just, he's ripping off 10 yard runs left and right behind this offensive line, behind these tight ends that are getting really good push. They're playing with great technique, great power. It's, it's all working right there. Absolutely. Remember, remember what I mentioned a couple weeks ago on the pod, Jeffrey? That Jonathan Taylor was kind of a slow starter. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely, <laughs> I was wrong about that. Well, not I this mean, year. Who knows, man? Maybe next year he's running for 250 over the course of the first two games. But you know, who who knows on that? But I I I do remember you saying that, and it's good to see him with some. We're talking about explosive plays. We see JT. Hell, I saw Trey Tur Trey Sermon do a little skip to Malou right there, finding out where he's going to get some extra yardage. When we talk about explosive plays. Again, Alec Pierce making it himself. I mean, didn't know what we had in Alec Pierce in the offseason, talking about him meshing with this wide receiver group. But when you're talking explosive plays, Lara, and blocking for that matter, we've seen some ISOs his on block him blocking as well. Alec Pierce. The JT touchdown. Yeah. Well, that I mean, goes back to his special team days, like back at his college career at University of Cincinnati, mm -hmm. right? Like what everything that he was able to do and some of the things that the Colts loved about him in the draft process was – what he had put on in terms of his ability, not just in the passing game, but willingness to do all of those things. I'm going to a note here, actually, that I have from the game in regards to Alec. And this is a conversation that he and I had coming out of the Houston game. And I asked him about just the mentorship and the guidance of Reggie Wayne. And he said, especially this year, to put Alec in the position that we have seen him in now through the first three games. He said, he's always been in my corner telling me to keep working, keep getting better at the little things. Talking this offseason, his big emphasis was having five back at quarterback, we are going to be able to take a lot of shots downfield. And he knows that plays into my game well. He's been a tremendous support to me, always in my corner. Mm -hmm. So this is what, going back to – Mini camp going back to the spring, even well before training camp. These are the exact situations that they envisioned perfectly utilizing Alec Pierce and the opportunity that you would have with the complementary skill sets of the guys who are all in that room together. So here's where <laughs> this Colts offense is it's wild what they're doing right now. The Colts have five completions of 40 or more yards this year. <laughs> they're on right. pace for 28 of those this season. No team last year had more than 15. San Francisco and Cleveland both had 15. Three teams in 2023 didn't even have five all season. Wow. The Cardinals, the Patriots, and the Jets. The last teams to have five completions of 40 or more yards in the first three games of a season, the 2022 Miami Dolphins, 
and the 2022 Philadelphia Eagles, mm. coordinated by Shane Steichen. Yeah, right. The, look, that's not. this is not a, like, sustainable thing. Like, it's probably going to come down as defenses are like, nope, we're not letting you do that. Mm. But for right now, if the Colts get one 40-yard completion a game, those almost always are going to lead to points. Because think about it. If you start a possession at the 30-yard yeah. line. Flipping that field right, pretty quick. 30-yard yeah. line, you get a touchback on a kickoff, and you get a 40-yard completion to start that drive. All of a sudden, you're on the opponent's 30-yard line. And that's field goal range right there. I think that's that's probably a staple that in the Shane Steichen offense that he's talked about and having the ability. We're talking about winning formulas like outside of Anthony Richardson, but Steichen right. is that that guy, that explosive guy that, hey, I'm going to throw it over the top. Reminds me of Bruce Arians in a lot of ways. Yeah. He's going to gut you somewhere down the field, and I think every week, am I wrong, that he's going to take shots to the Alec Pierce's, to the mm-hmm. A.B. No Mitchell's. No risky, no biscuit. Well, yeah. I mean, but, I not? mean, it, look, if they're there, those yeah. if those shots are there – the, the Colts are going to take them. Yeah, yeah. And, but now, now it's going to become our opposing defense is just going to say, you are not going to get those. We are going to put – we'll put three safeties back. We'll play prevent against you. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's probably a little bit of a stretch. But, like, we're going to do whatever we can to take away those shot plays. Then it, that, That's when it's going to become incumbent on Anthony Richardson to hit the intermediate stuff, the short stuff. Or if you're dropping everyone that far back – you're probably lightening the box a little bit. Mm-hmm. And you're really going to do that against Jonathan Taylor yeah, good, and Anthony Richardson in this rushing offense? Good luck on that. So even so, my point here is that even if the Colts' passing offense is not consistent right now, those deep shots have such an outsized impact on how defensive coordinators have to play this defense that it will help Jonathan Taylor and the run game. It will potentially help create more opportunities as Anthony Richardson figures out some issues with just connecting on those shorter throws that – will ultimately lead to this offense being dangerous as the year goes on, if it continues this way. After the first two games, my 70-something-year-old neighbor, Susan, even asked me. We love Susan on the podcast. What is, ro- what is going on with this Colts rushing defense? Lara, I'm going to throw that to you. We saw the first two weeks gashed against this team, and I know that uh, you know the running backs may have come down a little bit as far as ex- expectations, Josh Jacobs included in Green Bay and what happened. I- I'm just talking about, 63 yards after giving up a boatload. That switch was wonderful and getting takeaways in the same boat. Great job from the defense. That fourth down stop, guys. That, that looked like a pack of wolves stop. that That's was unreal. going after prey. I'm telling you. And all of this was, what was the big looming question going into Sunday? How do you fill the void of DeForest Buckner, <laughs> right? You get all of that with number 99 sideline for at least four games on IR with that ankle sprain. I want to give credit there, and obviously Leatu had an incredible game. You, the big takeaways uh, were critical in that as well. Across, so not really a prize to run defense mm-hmm. in that situation, but I'm just kind of talking defensive entirety. A shout out to what was the greatest illustration of Will, Taven Bryan, getting a sack in this football game, doing so after busting out his front tooth during warm-ups, he handed the tooth to a trainer Ooh. and played looking like, and I mean this with all great respect to Taven Bryan, who is a dog. You are a beast. You look like a jack-o'-lantern, right? <laughs> he has like a, a half of a front tooth, and he's out there mauling Caleb Williams. Like, Well done, Taven Bryan, yeah. I mean, the optics of this, like that man, I just thought, I was like, this is so great. Like, We're all like, how did he lose the tooth? The guys on the sideline, credit to Connor and all of our guys um, who are uh, on our production team. Oh, well, yeah. Saw it. New tooth okay. knocked out pregame. During warm-ups, handed it off. What would you have done if he handed you his tooth? I put it in my pocket. Yeah. Why do I have a fanny pack if I can't hold your tooth? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would have done that. Are you yeah. kidding me? Yes. No uh, like a grown man hands you his tooth. Yeah. He says, I need you to, s- to keep this for four hours. You know, as the, as the daughter of a dentist, I feel like it is my responsibility <laughs> yeah. to protect, uh, protect all, all teeth in any situation, whatever I can do. Great yeah. teammate. Yeah. I, but, yeah, you know, that was a little sidebar, of course. But, yeah, w- everything that you did in terms of those tweaks, Zaire Franklin was talking about it all week. Like, we changed some things. And you saw it in the second half against Green Bay. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, this wasn't just a, a – Flip of the switch, light bulb goes off to start this game. These are changes that were implemented in the second half against Green Bay that then you had to get some guys. And it really helped this defense to have all week the opportunity to work Taven Bryan in. Raquan Davis as well, stepping up, you know, huge for this defensive front. Added Tomo Adabare mm-hmm. 
in mm-hmm. there. The number of guys you were able to work in really benefited them to have the entirety of the week knowing what the expectation was going to be without Defoe. And the task only gets taller, you know, as you keep moving ahead. Um, but, yeah, really excited about what they did. And, yeah. Taven Bryan, you are my my king of the week. I thought Raekwon Davis played a really good game too. Nice one. Like that 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 was much needed from the interior of this D line. Well, and here's the thing: he had to get himself back into game shape because yeah, exactly. he missed such significant time in training camp. Obviously, getting his blood pressure in check and all of that. So you felt like that that time was coming, right, JJ? Right. And you know, so Raekwon played 38 snaps out of 90. I mean, there's a lot of snaps. Also. Real quick, just because I'm looking at the snap count, I want to give five shout-outs here to Jalen Jones, Nick Cross, EJ Speed, Zaire Franklin, and Julian Blackman for playing 90 snaps of football nice, wow. nice. on Sunday. What about Round Grove? What about Big Grove? Big Grove was in there for 49. Yeah, that's a lot of plays that's a for lot. the big fella, yeah. I, I thought, though, um, on the edges, the Colts are really good. The DNs and you know the linebackers coming down to set the edge were much improved in this game. That, that was incredibly important. For just, hey, set the edge, and then the interior of this defense, which is really good, even without DeForest Buckner in there, then they can go to work. Zaire Franklin had an awesome yeah, game. Yeah, I love seeing like Zaire. An awesome that game. was great. Um, this is, you'll get, you guys are going to see this. Man, my stumbles. This is, I'm really trying to get it together here. I need more coffee, clearly. <laughs> uh, you guys are going to see this in a piece that comes out a little bit later in the week, but some things that we learned um, in talking with Grover Stewart and Leati Latu. The message that Shane Steichen texted the defensive line that morning, run, run, reach. That was his message. That w- He kind of manifested that strip sack that Leati Latu had. Also, hilarious, Grover Stewart, we were talking to him about, obviously, all of the defense running to celebrate Leatu, and he said, I'm still laying there on the <laughs> ground trying to clutch this football and wrestle it away. Everybody else is down celebrating. Raekwon Davis was the only guy who stayed back there <laughs> <laughs> with me, and Leatu said, I knew he had it it was fine but Grove said that like it was taking all of his might because he has obviously like the hand and wrist protection and Mm -hmm. stuff like that so he couldn't clasp he said he was just basically putting it in between his elbows putting his belly on it like all of his force just squeezing the football on that takeaway that obviously led to a scoring drive for the Colts but um the other thing I mean I'm talking about manifesting DeForest Buckner told Leatu Latu before the game you're getting your first sack. Nice. This okay. And then, so I mean, maybe DeForest Buckner told Shane Waldron to have a tight end block him too. Yeah. Cole I'm Komet, sure he would have taken that. that. that I, I mean, yeah. yeah. Like, but Latu also he had a good game. Like yeah. he, I thought the pressures I, alone. The pressures yeah. alone were good, and I thought he was getting off on the snap. Like he was like in the backfield immediately. His he it, it actually yeah. kind of felt like the Colts had something in terms of like jumping the snap yeah. in that game because they were they were getting off real quick. And now Caleb Williams, that like. That dude, he's going to be good. Oh, he's yeah. going to be good. The stuff he can do in the pocket is really impressive. So they didn't get a ton of sacks or, you know, technical pressures. But, like, they were they were good up front. In and he threw for, a, threw for a ton of yards, too. I mean, yeah. his uh, you oh, know, by, by biggest the way, game. I, I do have one other. Th- look, can we talk about that goal line stand real mm-hmm. quick? Yeah. Because that right there, that's like it's first and goal on the four-yard line. And that is like you they're going to run it at you. The, the, the Bears had some maybe questionable – decisions as a part of that like having um, deandre carter block taekwon lewis who just threw deandre carter into Khalil the Herbert. Of my memoir by the way the what <laughs> questionable decisions <laughs> will be the name of my memoir the larry overton story uh yeah maybe maybe don't have a wide receiver trying to block taekwon lewis just a tip for the <laughs> bears uh taekwon even said like yeah i didn't really know why they did that but that that right there like that stop like grover stewart raekwon davis in the interior zaire franklin was awesome again on those plays that right there. I think, I think the Colts took a lot of momentum from that just defensively in terms of the run defense, because a week ago, two weeks ago, if you ran it four times with this Colts defense, it would have felt like you probably would have got in on the first or second Mm -hmm. attempt. And this time the the bears had to resort to a speed option that lost them 12 yards on fourth down because they couldn't run it up the middle on the, on the Colts. Is Tyquan Lewis maybe the most underscored, like, I don't know, like, most impactful like it just in terms of I feel like he has quietly had one of the most significant starts to the season of any defensive player from the consistency yeah. standpoint would you agree yeah he's he's been pushing the pocket you know he he's not a guy who's going to get maybe he's not going to get you 10 sacks but you know that he is creating opportunities for sacks by his play whether it's for him or for a teammate 
yeah, I mean, I totally agree. Like, there's a reason why the Colts mm-hmm. committed to Tyquan Lewis and have, even through all the injuries mm-hmm. he's went through, and said, we want you here in Indy. And, boy, is that paying off. And, Lara, that voice is heard in that defensive line room from Tyquan Lewis. That, if, if not the leader of that, that room, I'm going to call him one of the top leaders. I and mean, through every defensive line coach that has come through this building, like, they all, like, whenever you give it, get a chance to say, hey, who should we be talking more about? Every single one loves a chance to talk about Tyquan Lewis. Like, it just, that is who he is. He is such a core mentor, especially to some of the younger players. Um, and I think part of it is because he has been through so much. Like, there is nothing that he hasn't seen, that he hasn't, you know, been strengthened by. And he's just adapted and persevered and all the things that he's done. So he's just – he's so important in terms of an example for the rest of that room, I think. I, I think yeah. for the Colts, though, if we're talking about winning formulas here, right, you've got to lean on the veterans on defense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and those guys are the ones who are largely tasked with stopping the run. That's where these first two weeks of the season was so surprising in that they struggled with that. If you could get this front going, even without Buck in there, but you get the veterans rolling, you get Zaire Franklin playing like he did in week three, you get Grover Stewart, Raekwon Davis in there, two guys, you know, Raekwon hasn't been here, but he's a vet too. And, you know, Dio Dangbo on the edge, I thought had a really Played good great, game too, yeah. really good game. You get that part of your defense rolling, that is a formula that you are going to need. I don't know how you win without it. Right. I and don't know how you win without run defense. And those right names now. that we've talked about for months, Liatu Latu, Ra- Raekwon Davis we talked about, Taven Bryan we don't talk about all that much, but we talk about these guys are going to have to show up in well, order for the – that's what I'm here for. Yeah, I, I know. Taven that's Bryan that's true. Too. I mean, he's been around here a minute, but we talk like those guys need to step up if the Colts are going to win. Well, guess what? They did. They did? I mean, that's and the look, beauty of it. I don't care that the Bears came into this game with an awful rushing offense. Look, who cares? I don't care. The, the way things have been going, this was going to be a get-right game for someone. Sure was. Well, for the Bears rushing offense or the Colts rushing defense, Raekwon Davis said we needed to make a statement. Okay. Mm-hmm. They made a statement they against did. the Bears. This wasn't just a, oh, a bad rushing defense meets a bad rushing offense, and, you know, they average 3.5 yards per carry. You get out of there. This was like, no, they suffocated Gosh. the Bears rushing offense. And the Bears came in and wanted to run the ball. That's, they yeah. absolutely wanted to run the ball in this game, and they couldn't do it. That's how Raekwon Davis tackles people. He suffocates them. That's what it looks like when he's that big. All right, we've talked about the winning formulas. I want to move on. Is this for real? Is this for real? I want to start with the quarterback position. Right now, under 50% completion percentage out of AR right now. Is this for real? JJ, starting with you, does this last the whole year? How far? What's the climb going to be right now? Mm -hmm. Because to have success in this league, you need it from the quarterback position, and 49 point whatever percent is not that formula. Yeah, no team has made the playoffs with their starting quarterback having a completion, or their their total team Mm -hmm. having a a completion percentage under 50% since the 1987 Houston Oilers. Oh, okay, that's going back. Great uniforms they had, though. They did. Yeah. That's a whole thing, apparently, in Tennessee and Houston right now. Oh, yeah, it is. Glad we enough to be a part of that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's it's got to get better. Anthony knows that. It's got to get better. I think it will. I mean, you look at – guys are open. Guys are open. Michael Pittman Jr. was open mm-hmm. on that interception that Anthony Richardson threw. Josh Downs was open on the, the fourth down play that he sailed over his head. If guys are getting open, just – you know, Anthony said he's got he's to kind of calm down, just spin it, let it rip. And I kind of feel like th- there's a get-right game coming for Anthony Richardson in terms of completion percentage where he, he's going to come out of it at 15 for 20 or something. It's in there. And at that point, then, I think you're going to start seeing the climb. I don't know when that game will be. Hopefully against the Steelers. Steelers got an awfully good defense. Yes, they do. They, they have an awfully good defense. I don't know when that game will be, but I think once that Jackson happens. Jackson feels like a good opportunity. Yeah, there you go. That. Yeah. Well, Josh Allen put some stuff on, uh, on tape. I, I can't get enough. Like, that game, by the way, I'm going to keep getting derailed by this game. No. For the Jags to come out that flat, that's concerning. Yeah. That's concerning for them after they just played paid Trevor Lawrence all that money. They're in a ball. It's yeah. early. But yeah, it is early. I mean, the Sam Darnolds of the world, you know, want to wanna, – you know, they, I mean, yeah. the quarterbacks in this, it's a whole nother podcast, yeah. but the longer you stay around sometimes, it's not all that bad. But we're, by the, Okay, by the way, like, real quick, like, th- this is just a little AFC South yeah. sidebar that I have. If you're thinking of the four teams in the division of like where how how you talk about vibe check, I think the Colts are still second in terms of how they're feeling about their quarterback. Yeah. Even though he's completing 49% of his passes in his six picks, because Tennessee, you know, you got Brian Callahan cussing at Will Levis on the sideline and Jacksonville paid Trevor Lawrence all this money. And whether or not all of this is his fault, right. you're 0-3 and you, you can't really move the ball efficiently. 
uh, the Colts are confident in Anthony Richardson. Lara, the uh, locker room, yeah, the, the speech that Anthony gave, yes, where he's saying, hey, I'm going to play better for y'all, and then someone from the back goes, we're behind you, brother. Yeah, That right there, that tells you all you need to yeah, know. Colts, the, 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 they got confidence in him. He, he's going to be fine. No question. The solidarity of this offense is there. Vibes sh- are definitely high, as they should be. I, have, I talked to Jonathan Taylor about this last week, just about – Obviously, Anthony takes a lot on his shoulders and basically what they can do to support, you know, your young quarterback. And he said, we just let him know it takes all of us. It's not all on you. And, of course, you're at the helm being at the quarterback position. A lot of the spotlight is on you. But we don't want him to carry that on his shoulders. You let him know he doesn't have to and he won't. Kind of goes back to you're going to find ways to win games in different fashions. Also, it's such a small sample size on this season. You know, I mean, one of the things that I've – thought about this and and not that Shane hasn't made this excuse Anthony's not making this ex- is this excuse but you felt like the first four games of this season were basically going to be rookie year 2.0 mm-hmm. because of just how shortened how abbreviated Anthony's rookie season was was so you're f- you're seeing him find that groove and settle in and it is all going I like I, quite confidently there's like very few people I worry about less than Anthony Richardson just because of the poise, he's so steadfast, immense maturity for being the youngest starting quarterback in the NFL for a second straight season. Like, it's all there. It's all there, and especially the compliment that Shane is with him. And in being able to witness some of the sideline exchange, like the conversations, and I can't hear everything that's going on, but the um, conversations back and forth with – Jim Bob, when he's coming off the field, how they're reviewing things, all of that, like everything is there to show you that like this is working, this is building, and we're going to see them reap those dividends. I mean, I I don't want to sunshine and rainbows what it's been because it's been uneven and the misses like that, that fourth down where he, he misses that throw. Those are plays that will lose you games. They Mm -hmm. will, but the thing with Anthony is when he, he throws an interception or he is one of those plays, like Ryan Kelly was talking about this after the game. Like he was asked, like, do you have to say anything to Anthony? He's like, no, like he comes back and he immediately owns it. Yep. He's mature about it. He's, he's able to own his mistakes while not losing confidence because of them. And that for a young quarterback, that's not always the case. There are a lot of young quarterbacks who can own their mistakes, but they are internally wilting guys. Confident. This is a different Young man, this is a different quarterback than it was last year. The leadership that I'm showing, just the stuff at the in the locker room, from what we're seeing from that, just the things that he's talking. By the way, uh, Connor Handel behind the camera. uh, At a boy, Connor. Let me let me know who the player was. Yeah, it was Quentin Nelson. Quentin Nelson had his back. That's a big thing right there. Another feather in his cap. But I'm saying I'm watching this man mature right in front of our eyes. As far as hey, it's you have to be good on the field, but boy, oh boy. Your personality and your persona that you bring into the locker room and you bring out onto the field with you is so contagious when you're the quarterback. And I'm starting to see this stuff out of Anthony Richardson, which I'm getting excited about because, you know, everybody wants to get behind someone and run as fast as they can, follow them into a burning forest, and that's what we're getting right now. Well, it's, you know, week one. There were all those people who were clamoring, this is the best throw we've ever seen yeah, in yeah. the NFL. Oh, my gosh, <laughs> you know, 65 yards through the air or whatever, da, 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 da. And then they're like, oh, but what now? You know, now a week later, like, or two weeks later, Later, like how people don't feel. There's so much of like over analysis, especially of that, you know, those highs and lows in terms of people who are critiquing and commentating and all sure. of that. So mm-hmm. it's it's really funny because so praised for those explosive plays, incredibly impressive plays in week one. And then, you know, you're you're gonna go through some of those growing pains, so to speak. So yeah, I think you just have to compartmentalize Look, all if of Anthony that. Richardson's still completing under fifty percent of his passes in December, okay. you're probably worried. Yeah. But right I, now I don't I don't yeah, right now it's like, yeah, it's it's a problem, but he believes he can fix it. The Colts believe he can fix it. And even if he doesn't like immediately like we just talked about, there is a winning formula here on offense That's involving pick running the football yep. and hitting those forty-yard bombs downfield. You can you can win with that type of offense. <laughs> Absolutely. Is there any better person to help a quarterback, a young quarterback, find consistency in this league than Shane Steichen? No. He's up no. there. He's up there He's like this. He's absolutely up there. We're t- we talked earlier about it. The Steelers are coming in. The Steelers' defense right now is off the charts. Off the charts. So, one more AR question, guys. Really quick on this one, too. He's got six carries a game, averaging 39 yards. As a football mm-hmm. san- a fan alone, 
I love watching the kid run. I mean, I love it. He's going to truck some people. He's going to juke some people. He's going to, I mean, it's, it's wonderful. But is that the safest <laughs> game plan for somebody like this? My question is, and we'll move on, how much do we want to see AR running with the ball mm-hmm. in his hands? RPO options, I know those are going to be there. Uh, but how many rushes do we want, honestly, out of this guy? Because he's so productive with the ball in his hands. Yeah, I think, I think a little bit more. Per game Beautiful. could be could be the case, but I think it actually could come on scrambles. Mm-hmm. Right now, the Colts are twelfth in the NFL in scramble percentage on dropbacks. They're right between Jordan Love, so Richardson's right between Jordan Love and Will Levis on that list. You look at the top of the list. You got Jane Daniels, mm-hmm. who is he scrambles all the time, and then you kind of got your more you know the guys you would expect: Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Justin Fields, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts. All those guys up there are scrambling at a pretty decent clip. Even just you know, add one or two more scrambles per game. I love that Anthony wants to keep his eyes downfield and make a big play. But while while you're kind of figuring some of these things out in terms of just you know ripping the ball and getting it to your receivers, if he takes off one or two extra times a game and it's in the right spot and he gets out of bounds or he slides or he knows how to protect himself or knows when to you know make a physical play, that I'm I'm fine with that. I'm not worried about that. I don't know when Steichen's going to draw it up, but Lara, could you imagine a nice naked boot right out of that? Oh, uh, it'll happen. Th- I know, it, it, because if it's going to. You gonna, know he's had it. He's yeah, had right. it on the call sheet and just hasn't had the right situation. That's an 80-yard right? like, run. I mean, like, that could be an 80-yard run for, yeah. I mean, truly. There, there was, uh, where was this play? There was a play in this game where Anthony, uh, like, absolutely trucked someone. Uh-huh. And I, I want to say it was in the. Maybe like the third quarter. Let's see. I'm going to – Oh, the third – oh, here it is. I just pulled it up on my computer. Oh, my goodness. All right, 57 seconds to go in the third quarter. The class. 57 uh, – yeah, so 57 seconds left in the third quarter. It's Kevin Byard. They run a, a little zone read. Good player. Ratch- Richardson meets Byard in the hole, and he just runs through it. Poor guy. Oh, it's I mean – It's 255 pounds bam. coming at you, Kevin. Yeah, that I was I mean, fun. good luck that on fun. that. I wish I could uh, have shared – I, you know, you can't really see it. If you're you're on uh this is like the world's worst way to show all twenty two, but oh man, he just this is physical. Bam. <laughs> Goes right through him. This is terrible for our audio yeah, listeners, by the way. And that will be a consistent, I think, is Anthony Richardson with the ball in his hands. Tr- that, is that terrible for our audio <laughs> listeners? Is that yeah, no, mean? that's not gonna yeah. be consistent, but it's talk about consistencies. Oh. Alex also probably wasn't great for our video. <laughs> yeah. Here's this computer right here. Wasn't great. We, Alec we Pierce. Have the magic of editing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Sorry, guys. Alec this is Pierce, low, low tech here. 25 yards at reception, leads the NFL right now. Explosive plays. We talked about it. Is this guy going to – are we talking about this week in and week out? He's going to drop at least two in the bucket to Alec Pierce down the field? So, what I love about Alec's season is no one else in the NFL is able to chuck it downfield. <laughs> it's like Rashid Shahid who got shut down in week three. And, and like, that's it. Him and Alec at the top of the league. And this is way the, where the NFL has been going lately, right? That these two high shells are taking away – these deep explosive passes. There hasn't been a guy who's averaged over 20 yards per reception who's qualified for the league lead since 2020. Ooh, okay. So Good on you, Alec. The, so Alec, I mean, Alec's at 25. That's like he's leading the league at 25 per. That is nuts. Mm-hmm. But he's finding a way to get open downfield. He's. It's not just hey, you know, hey, go run fast downfield. It's he's he's got really good feel for how to get open downfield, and he's got a quarterback who can get him the ball. There's absolutely a world where we get to the end of the year and Alec Pierce leads the NFL in yards per reception. That and is real. And he was real. so close to a third straight game with a touchdown. Yep. Oh, I mean, he was right there. Like, I was just watching it like, oh, like one, you know, squeak it out and get. I mean, what, it was stopped at the two, maybe? Yeah. Like, and that was, that was uh, Richardson turned it over in the end zone after that, unfortunately. Okay, but yeah. The, those are the plays that, okay, if Anthony's going to complete 50% of his passes, but he hits two of those a game. Those are points. Right. Those are sure. probably going to lead to points 90% of the time. Let's stay here really quick with wide receivers. Josh Downs, first game back or first game this year, mm-hmm. obviously the third one of the season. His input against what happened against the Bears and also A.D. Mitchell. Guys, just give me your thoughts on this real quick. I think he only had like seven offensive snaps mm-hmm. right there for number 10. So where are we going with Josh Downs and A.D. from here on out? Well, I think with Josh it was understandable. I don't know – that he was necessarily on a pitch count, Mm -hmm. but you were going to be intentional about how you were working him back in, right? And so liked to see the implementation, getting Josh Downs in there, getting him those reps. Um, And then, yeah, A.D. Mitchell, like that the time is is coming. You know, I think that 
Anthony continues to reiterate his confidence in AD, right, going to him. Um, it's just a matter of, like, finding that connection. And, um, you know, AD has said before, like, you know, I don't want to be that voice in the quarterback's head, right, like on the misses that they'd had before and different things like that. So, yeah, that's – that's so – that is something that is brewing, right? That's go that's going to hit. They're going to see those, um, and you know, obviously too. One thing, I don't. I took for granted how banged up Pitt was coming into that game, yeah. right? And for him to have, you know, take the number of snaps that he did, uh, JJ. I mean, it was up there. Yeah. Um, I thought was to me. I mean, just sh I mean, n we never doubt like the if he's going to show. Strength, yeah, he right. played. Right? He played forty seven out of fifty six offensive there you snaps. Go. I, about that. I so. mean, the back, the knee, and that's like didn't yeah. practice on Friday, right? right. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think that again, young receivers, young pass catchers, um, those are things because we really saw, you know, very little of the connection between Anthony and Josh last season. Um, and you saw really Josh start to evolve and, you know, with Gardner Minshew, completely different type of quarterback. Um, so he's going to be, Josh will be critical for Anthony finding some consistency in terms of the intermediate offense. Right. And, and, you know, Downs had, there was that one play, I think he dropped on the near sideline, but for the most part, you expect him to catch those, yeah, those for passes. Sure. That, that's, that was a, that's you're, not, you're, butter, not worried, yeah. you're not worried about that. Um, on A.D. Mitchell, though, yeah, he only played six snaps in this game. Um, I, I think as he grows with Anthony, those can kind of come back. Right. But right now, I mean, you can't take Alec Pierce off the field. You don't want to take Michael Pittman Jr. off the field, and you don't want to take Josh Downs off the Ashton field. Ashton Doolin's getting some reps, Ashton too. Doolin, that, Ashton yeah. Doolin, absolutely. He got 13 snaps. Yeah, yeah. Like he, you know, this is, a, this is why we talked about the Colts having a deep receiver room. And they're all going to be needed. AD. Yeah. Right. And, and I think this is a good opportunity now for AD Mitchell to earn his way back into it. Yeah. And, you know, OK. Right, hey, like, let's work on that connection. Let's work on getting open on time and, you know, catching the football and he'll get back in there. And he he still got open on that deep one that got broken up by the right. safety. He still got open on that play. Mm -hmm. He can get open. And, they, no and, and that, that will continue. Guys, we're going to be talking about mascots. Yeah, I said it. NFL mascots. I, I We haven't yet in a long time. I don't think we've ever talked about NFL mascots. we got to talk about this. We're, we are going to talk about that, but not yet. I'm still going there. Liatu Latu, Lara, from here on out. He got not the monkey off his back type of thing, but, yeah, he did get his first sack. It was a strip sack. It was a turnover. They got points over the thing. Is it go time now for this young man? And the importance that he brings with his not only his pressures, his strip sacks, his sacks, but with no default, like you said, no Buckner in there right now, the importance of Liatu Latu to this defense right now. In talking to guys, you know, last week or after the game and then throughout the week, um, they all talked about, like, this is his high motor. When you have a high motor – Mm -hmm. Those are the type of plays that you are able to make. And that is, I mean, he said it. This is the reason I was drafted here was to make plays like that. And you see that he's going to continue. You know, we, we talk about the fact that, you know, takeaways kind of come in bunches uh, in one way, shape, or form. And, yeah, you feel like that this was a breakthrough for him. This is almost his uh, arrival to the NFL with having a play just like that. But, yeah, you he's going to have to be disruptive. I mean, it's not going to be a strip sack every game, but he is going to have to be disruptive up there for this defense to continue to be effective, mm -hmm. continue to affect the passer, um, and have the type of success that we saw last week. I, I do like that among 2024 draft picks, he is the highest pro football focus pass rush grade, which is, you know, when, when they grade it, and that's not what, you know, how you know the Colts internally grade it always, but – when they grade it and he's out there rushing the passer, he's been better than any draft pick, any rookie Love this it. year. Better than Jared Verse, better than Dallas Turner, some of these guys who went high. Um, he he's going to be fine. He's None of them fine. went higher. None of them Leo went higher. Then Leo he's he's going to be fine. Is he like? It's still an adjustment. Like yeah. he, it's great preseason. It's still an adjustment to the speed of how I mean how defenses are going to or offenses are going to chip you and game plan for mm -hmm. you. It's still an adjustment, but he's he's figuring it out. He's he's gonna be fine. All right, JJ, I want to stay with you. Stats guy, it is coming up, and I got some stats for you. Enlighten us, help us out, give us the good, find the silver lining in this one. Colts defense, twenty eighth on third down, twenty seventh on fourth down, twenty sixth in the red zone. Lara, 
Are these for real? Yeah, I mean, I, I know we're one and two, and the record does show that under 500. And stuff. Are these for real, or is this going to flip? Are we going to flip the switch on this and kind of work our way up those so, so we're not that the, the seller dweller when it comes to the NFL teams and defensive? Yeah, I think I think it starts with more consistently stopping the run, mm-hmm. which, you know, we saw against Chicago. Started that, yep. Uh, you know, the Colts last year were 11th on third down. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they, they've got they, – they've had some success there. They're 18th in the red zone. They were okay in the red zone last year a little below average. So the the situational stuff, I wanted to bring it up, though, just because that, that's where you are going to have to be better. It mm-hmm. did feel like Chicago had too many third-down conversions yeah. uh, in, in that game where, they, you know, we knew they were going to throw it, and, you know, they are able to get it. You know, Cole Komet had a huge game. Sure right? he did. Um, those wow. are ones where when you're leading, you that's where you want your defense to get a sack mm-hmm. on third down, get – Get pressure, force a throw away, force an errant throw that you can take the ball away and seal the game. I think they've got, you know, the the more that this defense plays together and um, the um, just the 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 front continuing to rush more four is one. I think you're going to see more and more pressures on those plays that do lead to a mistake mm-hmm. where you, you want the defense to finish it. On third down, I was just a little. I, I wanted to highlight that just because it was a little worrying how Chicago was able to move the ball in some of those situations late in the game where the defense felt like they could have put their stamp on it and wasn't quite able to. Right. Well, Lara, defensively speaking, obviously uh, a lot's going to happen from here on out, and they're going to flip the switch on this. Charlie Partridge showing that mm-hmm. uh, you know he's here. Colts are on pace for another record-setting sack uh, year, if you will. They were before kickoff at least uh, against the Chicago Bears on pace for 51 overall. They're down in the in the cellar right now defensively. No DeForest Buckner, no Juju Brents. I mean, we see that. Can they flip the switch and get this at least up to the midway point? Give me 17, give me 15, give me 14 overall because right now consistently going to happen, and we got some tough opponents coming up that can rush the football there. I mean, think about last year. How what, You had a significant stretch where you missed Grover Stewart. Yes. And you figured out a way. Did. Right? Did. So <laughs> I, I think that you have that ability – this room is deep enough that you can do it even without DeForest, who is obviously your Pro Bowl, All Pro, everything, um, the absolute Iron Man of this defense. Yeah, I think that this is a situation in which they're not going to let their foot off the gas. They know what is going, what the key to their success is going to be, and it everything kind of runs through that front. Even as well, of course, and as talented as that linebacker group is, and obviously the play that you're getting from Jalen Jones and Kenny Moore and Julian Blackman and Nick Cross and the guys on the back end, like, it all starts up front, right? There's just – that's how this – this defense is built that's where your investment has been made and that's where a lot of these pieces are just going to have to keep stepping up and I think you're going to have different guys with flashes different weeks and it's we, good to see we don't know we don't know if DeForest Buckner is going to miss a minimum you know the yeah minimum, we don't uh, on IR but the earliest he could come back is Miami mm-hmm. and this is kind of the same thing if you could you can come out of the, like four games potentially minimum without Buck if you go three and one in these games beautiful and then you drop Buck back into this defense now you're starting to think, okay, you can you can really make some noise here. That mm-hmm. would be, I mean, even if you go two and two, right? That's still that's still good. That is still fine. You can still make some plenty of noise with that. But three and one would mean, I believe, you'd just be even on the season. Uh, going into week six. So. Well, more's, more's about to happen because Wednesday the Colts are back on the field for practice. You follow both of these and go to Colts.com if you want information. Both of these. Journalists, I should say. I didn't. I, I left it open on both of these. I just left it. So I'm sorry Lara, about that. Lara, can we talk about yeah. your Big J Journo moment uh, after the game Sunday? <laughs> Big J Journo moment. Sure. Fill in the blanks. Go ahead, Jace. Well, so we're it's Lara and I talking to Jalen Jones. Okay. And Jace and Lara, Jace, huh? Lara, Lara goes. Uh, Jalen, okay. our, our oh, it was a very lighthearted. Like Anthony was over there pouring water on Jalen <laughs> Jones. It was very celebratory. Yes. So we were we were having some fun. And uh, Lara goes, Jalen, are turnovers kind of like kids? You can't pick your favorite. <laughs> yeah. And I look, at, I look over at Lara, and I'm like, that was good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> you just kind of make eye contact. of like, that was good. It was, it was really fun. I actually can't even remember what his response was. I don't even remember what like, his response was because I was like, ah, <laughs> ah, good one. But, I mean, yeah, when you get two of them, like, do you pick a favorite? Like, you know, is, is one better than the other? Mm-hmm. I don't know. You're looking at me like this. So, anyway. I, once again, I mean, when you have two kids – Whoever goes down to bed easier, 
Yeah. It's probably the favorite that night. So whatever whatever interception came to you easier, I guess. Yeah, so I know, guess probably the first one. Yeah, or, yeah. or but then, whichever I mean, one led to a scoring drive, Right, maybe? but I like, guess, like, you know, if it's like, oh, you know, one of these kids is having a really hard time going to bed, and I still got him down to bed. Man, I feel really good about yeah. that. Yeah. I feel like I really accomplished something tonight. <laughs> yeah, I... Yeah, that was, was honestly, it was such a wacky game. I think I went into that locker room like, what are we going to do in right. here? Like, I was, I, I had a lot of fun with hey, that one. Um, also, well, yeah. go ahead. You had a lot of fun pregame. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. What was I you doing? You know, Lara is like besties with the Pacers. Like all, you know, like the TJ yeah, McConnells, them, right? the Halliburtons and stuff. I love going over there and talking. And the funny thing is, I, I, did, I didn't meet TJ McConnell, but he was there. You were talking with him and stuff. He had a football in his hand. And I just do naturally, instinctually try and punch it out, try and punch it out like, like we no. do here on 56th Street. And he's like this, yeah. and he's like ball security. Oh, yeah. you know, he's like that. He was it was, it. He it was, was fun. Like, Do and, I have it right? Do yeah. I have it right? Eagle claw. And, Eagle claw. and he was great. Wrist above the elbow. He was great on the end. Body so ball boundary. Yeah. Bring back TJ McConnell. I love it. I love it. Or, you know, uh, Halliburton dancing. Yes. And Mac with these oh, again. Always Tyre, Tyre, Tyre's that. Halliburton. Oh, what uh, a guy. Also, yeah. uh, the fact of Jonathan Taylor running out the back of the end zone and into the arms of T.Y. Hilton yeah. might be one of my favorite that moments was cool. of, the, of the year so far. Also, it's just such a fun game um, all around. But at halftime, I run up to do our, our kind of halftime hit, Lucas Oil Plaza. Mark, thank you so much. One of the regular viewers, listeners to the podcast and all of our coverage. So awesome to talk to him. Marcus. So, Mark, yeah. Which one, this one? Uh, <laughs> hey, thanks, buddy. <laughs> so wanted to give him a shout out. It's always fun. Yeah, thanks, to Mark. So, especially like. You know, game days can be so hectic where you're running around, you got a million things going on. So when you have a couple, you know, minutes to to chat with people and just hear what they think of the podcast and yeah. uh, the video content and articles and everything, it's just um, it's just awesome. It's just reassuring and exciting to hear from. At Lara Overton, at JJ Stankovitz, and of course at Colts.com. Go, guys. Um, oh. Speaking of halftime, yeah, we're we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there at halftime. I just want to talk about this. Coming into Indianapolis, right? And best of luck to the Fever, by the way. They're playing on Wednesday. Caitlin Clark, Alea Boston, and, and the rest of the team. Good luck on that. But, guys, when the Steelers freaking come into town, and we're going to get to halftime, uh, the importance, J.J., of you. I, I know this is joking. When, when Not really joking. You've got to have a game, bro. You understand what I'm saying? J.J. Stankovitz, you have to have a game because these freaking people travel at the rate that is, uh, you know, overwhelming sound barriers are there, black and gold everywhere that they go. I'm just hearing you in my head, it's third down. Like, we need that. So I'm saying this, guys, just to get started early on the week. If you're going to the game, bring your megaphone, for, for crap's sake. We need as are those lo- allowed? Can you bring those in? Well, you can't do that. If you can't, okay. stub it in a clear bag if you do bring it. But I'm just saying it's so important to have the home field advantage and these Steelers coming in, uh, you know, that's a scary thought because it not only is their defense so stinking nasty, these guys travel and can fill up half the building. All right. I do want to talk about halftime. Go, go. So I want to play a clip. We're going to play a clip of what we did at halftime. If you haven't seen it, it's mascots versus peewees. Take a look at this. There goes Blooper. Oh, the stiff arm. Okay, so I wanted to play this because I wanted to shout out Brian Mitchell. Great run, by the way. <laughs> uh, I mean, great run by Blooper. Uh, Brian Mitchell, who is uh, part of our content team. He does a lot of stuff, the, di- the cool digital graphics you see on the scoreboard. He has a panel that is sound effects oh, okay. that we just mess around with in the office. And he was hitting the honks and bonks. It worked. Throughout the, the mascots versus peewees. That was incredible. <laughs> shout out to Blue, who texted me last night that he's really sore. Uh, and I also want to give a real shout out to Air Blue, Air Blue. who just face planted. Yeah, that was funny. One of Brownsburg kids go to touch. And also shout out to Brownsburg. Yeah. Good sports. Good job. Good sports on the whole thing. That's Those great. mascots did not let up. I do like seeing. Great time. I, I, uh, my question to Jalen did not make the transcript. No? I was trying to go uh. in to see if they made the transcript. <laughs> That's funny. I do like watching mascots truck little kids, and I don't mean mm-hmm. that in a mean way. The kids are they're all padded up and yeah. everything the like that. The mascots have no pads on. But it is fun. You know, and they Blue's, are, Blue's got yeah. his uh, you know, hip thrusting thing. Yeah. But uh, that's you know, it's not a pad. <laughs> it's, it's not like not. put a helmet on. 
All right, guys. Uh, that was fun. Thank you, JJ. You got to have a big game, Lara. You got to have a big game on the sidelines. The Steelers are awaiting. Get, let's get this I'll thing be to the tooth fairy. I'm let's, to yeah, go. for sure. Let's get this thing to two and two, and then the fun begins. It's been a great week. It always is. I like I said, the cake is sweeter when we win. So let's do that against the Steelers. Nobody's expecting this one. Oh, the Steelers are this. The Steelers are that. Let's go show them the business, Colts fans. If you're going down there, get there early. Make sure you're loud and proud up in the stands. And of course, again, at Lara Overton, at JJ Stankovitz, and Colts.com for the latest information. Let's get out of here before the card rolls out. Connor, thanks for your help so much. And I just want a general reminder to you, this is the worst couch in Indianapolis. <laughs> we, it just is. God, my back is killing me right now. I'm numb on my backside. We'll be back next week. Hopefully it's two and two. Thanks to Lara. Thanks, JJ. We'll see you then. <laughs>